So there are five basic OpenSQL statements that we will use all the time in our programs. And these are select, insert, update, modify, and delete. So first of all, the select statement. Now you should be familiar with this already because we have used it in quite a few programs. And the select statement allows us to select records to use in our program from database tables. Next up, we have the insert statement. This allows us to insert new records into a database table. Then we have update. And the update allows us to modify records that already exist in the table. And then we have a modify statement, which does the same, but there is a slight difference that we will come to. And lastly, delete. And yep, we can delete records from a table. Now, whenever we use any of these statements in an ABAP program, I want you to get into the habit of checking to see if the action that you have executed has been executed successfully. Because if we try to insert a record into a database table and it actually didn't get inserted correctly, or maybe it didn't get inserted at all, then we need to know this so that we can take the appropriate action in our program. And you do this by using a system field that you have already seen when we took a look at debugging our program. And this is sy sub rc. Now when one of our statements is executed successfully, this field will contain a value of zero. So all we need to do is check for a value of zero and then continue with our program. But we need to check if it doesn't contain a zero. If our statement was not carried out successfully, this variable will contain some other value. And depending on the individual statement, the value can have a different meaning. Therefore, you must make sure you understand what the different return codes are for the different ABAP statement you were using. You will find that in practice, it becomes second nature and many of the standard statements use the same return code to represent similar results. But don't count on this. Make sure you know how to check the individual return code for each statement and you know what each of the individual return codes means. That way you can code your program accordingly to take the right action depending on the result. Now let's move on and start using some of these statements in a program.